44 minutes after the hour, America. It's Hugh Hewitt, Jackie Combs, my guest from the New York Times. Uh, most of the, the rest of this hour and most of hour two today, after I talked to Chuck Todd briefly, talking with her about her new extended piece, research piece. They don't give a damn about governing. That's not her words. It's a quote. Conservative media's influence on the Republican Party, uh, published by the Shorenstein Center. It is uh, linked over at HughHewitt.com. Jackie, I want to go to, to there's a lot of stuff I want to touch you about, but the mm-hmm. most, the, the thing I wrote wow next to uh, is uh-huh. on actually page 24 of your paper, a quote by David Yepsen. Again, it's not you saying this, but I want to read it uh-huh. for the audience. David Yepsen, formerly a politics writer at the Des Moines Register and now director of the Paul Simon Public Policy Institute at Southern Illinois University, said, quote, the right always owned talk radio. The left failed at that. His explanation, quote, the demographics of who listen to talk radio and what times of the day, you know, blue collar people, people at home, less well educated, lower income. You can go into an auto shop and hear Rush or the local guy on the radio. You don't hear that at a Starbucks, close quote. Now, there, that is so pregnant with disdain for my audience that I have to unpack it a little bit. But I want to begin <laughs> with a, a re- reference to a 1993 article. Do you remember the Michael Weisikoff article, Energized by Pulpit or Passion, the public is calling, that the, uh, resulted in a famous retraction in the Washington Post? You know, this is sounding vaguely familiar. I never would have thought of it in a thousand years if you hadn't brought it up, but you're going to have to... Uh... Yeah, well, in it, he well, referred... This was in the Washington Post, right? Yeah, February 1st, 1993, Weisskopf piece. In it, he referred to the followers of of uh, Jerry Falwell and Pat Robertson as, quote, largely poor, uneducated, and easy to command. The Washington Post retracted that the next day, saying there's no factual basis for that statement. Quite a scandal in 1993. Isn't David Yepsen repeating the same error in his dismissal of the talk radio audience? Uh, short answer is yes. Um, but you don't think there's any truth to it at all? I think that, well, I, I... I only bring this up. I don't, first of all, I didn't take it with such dismissal, maybe because those are my people. Um, but you know, being from blue collar Toledo myself and none of my siblings went to college um, and they're all very smart people. But um, I do think, you know, like any time I've had to go any place for service during the day, whether it's, well, let's use it to get my car fixed or um, I, I, whatever. I would many, many times over the years hear Sean Hannity or Rush Limbaugh, or you, for that matter, but I don't put you in the same category as them. I, I, I do. I, I'm just a talker. I, I'm just a talking head. Now, I've got a Harvard degree, but Levin's actually smarter than I am when it comes to the constitutional law. He and I have been colleagues since uh, Ronald Reagan's first term at the Department of Justice, and so I know how smart Levin is. I, I was, didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Levin and I have been pals. Levin is really brilliant. Have you ever read any of his, um, any of his books? Jackie? Um, not the whole book. Okay. And ma- mainly, I just have followed him. Oh, God. It, well, Twitter has made it easier to follow him. He's a, he's a, can, he's a dear, dear friend. And Liberty and uh-huh. Tyranny and Emeritopia and his new one, uh, Plunder and Deceit, they're extraordinary works of a first-class intellect. But what Yepsen, mm-hmm. I think, is saying, and, and, and Blue Collar is, you know, my audience is White Collar, Blue Collar. But it skews highly educated. And I think this mm-hmm. may be, um, and you can tell that by my sponsors. I'm selling the Employee Retirement Stock Ownership Program. I am selling all sorts of things uh, mm-hmm. that are very expensive price point, high income, high education correlation. And mm-hmm. I think Yepsen is looking down his nose. He's been a guest on my show. He's a terrific reporter, and he was at the register. Yeah. But I really think he has contempt for this audience. Yeah, I guess that's where I would differ with you. I mean, I can see the... Taking and you know, and I sort of blanched a bit uh, at, at the quote, but not a lot because I didn't take it. I didn't take it in the spirit of disdain or dismissiveness. Um, there is, you know, I don't have it at my fingertips, but there, there are, uh, you know, Pew mainly. There are studies that do show that those people. I'm not talking about your audience because I have not done or seen audience surveys for you or anyone else, but that it does skew towards 
um, you know, non-college degree, uh, uh, blue collar, but it's really hard to say these days. Yeah, all, all I could it's, offer to you is, is anecdotal evidence. The reason that, that Daniel Silva or, or C.J. Box or, or uh, for example, last week, uh, former ambassador to Israel, Michael Oren, came in and they mm-hmm. spend so much time with me is that, we, that my public buys books. They actually go and right. read the Shorenstein Center right. papers. The, they actually are hungry for information. They are high information voters as opposed right. to low information voters. And I, I can't prove it, but my thesis is that the average conservative is a lot better informed than the average liberal. What do you think about that? Well, now you're the one that's stereotyping. I am, I, but that's my proposition. Very naked. I think the average conservative voter is much better informed than the average liberal voter. Do you disagree? Um, God, I hate to do this to you, but you know when I don't have, I, I guess I do disagree. I don't have the data in front of me, and I so I can't make that conclusion, and I can't say it rings really true. I think you have very informed people in both camps, and then you have people that are very knee-jerk, under-informed. Second thing I want to talk to you about is, is why their conservative talk radio is so large. And you write at one point that, that uh, you quote somebody else as saying they can't seem to get their talk radio act together, right, that they failed. In fact, NPR's got 25... Oh, you're, you're talking about the, the left has failed. Yeah, right? the left has failed. Yeah, yep. NPR's got 25 million listeners a day. They're very liberal, aren't they? I don't think what comes. I don't think uh, NPR's product is is liberal or conservative. I think it's. Uh, I think the NPR gets a bad rap. Frankly, I will. I will say that. Uh, okay, we disagree again, Jackie, because I worked for PBS for ten years, uh, a, uh-huh. night, a nightly news and public affairs host at the KCET affiliate in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. I was the only conservative there. I was the only conservative in the entire network. Uh, I look at the NPR lineup. It's full of liberals. Their talk show hosts are liberal. It's just like the Salem mm-hmm. Radio Network is conservative. But mm-hmm. we'll, co- we'll come back from break. I think that's why the numbers skew a little bit is, is we're not that much far ahead. It's just the left always listens to NPR.